Okay, so since uh, we were desperate, since all you people are losers, um, and didn't come up with any more lightning talks. Oh, good, thanks. So those of you who didn't. Um, anyway, so this is something I've been incubating for a while, so it's very haphazard. Um, but hopefully there's a few things that we can think on here. Uh, some of it's probably crap, maybe all of it's crap, but maybe there's some good stuff here too. So, anyway. Um, oh, and I'm Robert Blackwell, for those of you who don't know. So, you know, when we're writing code, you know, everyone's always like, oh, validate your inputs and make sure everything's clean and yada yada. Well, I'm not going to say that's wrong, because that's completely right, except for when it's not. Um, because whoever, like, you know, treats Perl like a query language, I do it all the time. I mean, grepping through text files and parsing and trying to grab some kind of meaning out of some data. But maybe I need the data to actually be really valid. So what I've actually been doing for some things is I build a set of test suites and use, you know, test more and test deep and all of our cool testing tools and validate that data completely separate from my analysis. And then I can go write a script to just parse and look at the pieces that I want. And if I think the data may still be kind of dirty, I go modify the test script. It doesn't always get perfect. But uh, that's been working pretty well for me, and I can think about the right thing at the right place. Um, it's not the perfect solution for everything, but that's something to think about. Because um, we have some really awesome testing tools in the Perl community. And they can actually be working as query tools. So if you have a giant corpus of data, I worked at a company that I can't say, but we had, you know, we're basically like, we had tons of config data for all these services, all metadata out, and so a lot of it was human editable, a lot of it was machine writable, but things, evolve over time, and when you have thousands and thousands and thousands of customers, things get wrong. So instead of like rewriting every single tool to touch that, yeah, yeah, that's the better solution, but we actually uh, wrote some testing tools that look outside of it and just validate the data, and then we don't have to go fix everything everywhere else. So what are we doing? Um, I was talking uh, to some folks over a beer once about like a coder's calendar, and how great would it be if you could um, like see what people are working on at a particular time, so instead of like going, mm, what's on TV? Um, I don't care. What's Chip working on? And you know, how do you spy on him? You know, is there like best pin or whatever kind of stuff, screen sharing you could play with? That could be kind of cool. And you could even automate it by what you might be working on through like RT or GitHub or whatever. So you know, just once they start working on it, you could actually know what they're working on. Um, test API. Uh, how many? Um, so normally all of our test scripts are shoved down inside of you know the modules T directory. Um, I would argue that it would be pretty good to actually do a namespace like test API or something similar to get that crap out of there and let someone else be thinking about the overarching API tests and then someone else go write the code that passes those tests. And the other cool things, um, other than the separation of those two thought processes, because they are different, um, even though most of the time the same person's wearing the same hat, um, things like anybody use Git, like Git bisect, then your test scripts could be in here and when shit breaks, um, it could be checking out and your test scripts are separate and it would work better with git bisect, which would rock. Um, wrong button. Uh, missing Perl. So um, as a Perl organizer, I go looking around for like what cool stuff is going on with Perl, uh, what API examples are out there. Uh, there are not any Perl examples out there anymore. I mean, there's some, but like most new services and things that are out there, Perl's missing. It's all Python and Ruby. And that's fine. And you talk to some of the inner circle of the Perl people, and they don't give a shit. They should care. Um, because when people go to write code, I do this myself. I've got a problem. The example pretty much solves it. Copy, paste, boom, I'm done, and I didn't touch Perl. Our Perl examples kind of need to be there. Um, so, you know, when you are out there in the world and the new great service comes along, and there's not a Perl example, poke at people, because you probably know Perl people that are working there. Because just because the examples aren't there doesn't mean Perl's not. Um, Oh, that's bullshit. Um, uh, uh, some more BS. Beer. Be sure and be drinking beer with your Pearl buddies. Great stuff happens. Or does it? And either way, you get beer. Um, hold, a, hold a Pearl event. Um, I think I've mentioned to some of you already, um, but in case you missed it, uh, Chris said this event's about 2000 bucks. Uh, that's about the price any of you go to an actual professional conference. These are fantastic conferences. Just the professional eyes cons and things cost way more. So you could, you know, out of your own pocket, have a cool event for the same price you go off and, you know, go to a professional event. So how cool is that? That's more BS. Um, so Pearl ideas. How many of you, like, you know, this is the greatest thing that could ever happen to Pearl but my work schedule and my wife and my kids and my, ah! You know, what if we had a, a better butt bucket than just our buddies in IRC to start capturing some of that stuff? I don't know what it is, but we should have something. Uh, that's more BS. And I'm done.